Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome inside. We got T Mez over here, Sean Buckley here, Jack Slash TV. We are here with the commentary of your lives, right, T Mez? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a little. Uh, we're gonna just get jump right in, dude. We're gonna we're gonna recap your big weekend here. So, what are we doing here, dude? We're at Do Coin. I mean, Do Coin indoor racing. You know, last indoor race of the year, first extreme outlaw race of the season. Well, those and uh, I picked up a win the last one, so I'm ready to go. Dude, all right. So here we are. So we're in Ducoin, Southern Illinois Center. Let's just go back real quick. Look at this. Look at this thing. Dude, this is the, the EA Stealth. Is that what we're calling this thing? E it's the EA Stealth, which is the Engler Ford. Uh, that's what we're calling the motor. And because uh, Ford really doesn't have a big part of it. So I'm trying to get Ford off the name. But it is the the ford cylinder head and uh in the brand new mf1 john farrell built what's the what's the mf1 stand for what's mf uh that's a great question mother and mother i should know mother, that mother frucker <laughs> um <laughs> Made to go fast. Uh, I don't know, I mean, but I mean, made to go fast. One. I mean, we could do all sorts of shit. We can riff all day. Oh, uh, you know, his nickname is Muffin, so it's it's Muffin One. But you know, oh, like you the MF One this weekend. So you know, we'll just kind of go with that. Nice. Uh, what a setup, though, dude. Look at this thing. This thing's looking good. You got the pits, dude. Where were you guys posted up at? Right at the right at the entrance. It, it wasn't a bad spot, you know. It had a little bit of fresh air. You know, it's indoor racing, so it's fumy. All right, so we got to let everybody know, dude. When you're doing all these, you're filming. You don't have like a crew. I mean, you'd love to have a little crew following old Team STV around. However, this is all you, dog. You got the new Osmo going. You're you're your own little camera crew following yourself. I love it. Yeah, this was actually my brand new uh, Canon R8. You know, I kind of look like a photographer with my big camera, uh, but it takes good footage. And then, and then I did bust out the the Osmo. You know, I was just trying to step up my game with my my YouTube stuff over the winter. And uh, you know, I was using GoPros, and I still run GoPros on the car, but they're not the best. You know, like footage as far as like 4K footage. Let's talk about the scheme, dude. Now you, it looks like you transferred over that California, that California colors, dude. Over to the over to this machine right here. Does this? Did you have the call on this? Is this is nice? So pink has been my thing lately. You know, for like the last five years, I've been in pink cars, and uh, you know, my pink thing. cars are easy to see. Mm, uh, indeed. So when indeed. when we were putting this together, Tim's wife, uh, she was. She was all about these colors, and uh, my my guy at High Side Designs, he he whipped it all together, Tim. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it is looking right. Divot Tim, shout out Divot Golf Factory. What's up? Yeah. Yep, oh, Tim, Tim Cox, Tim oh, Cruz, Tim Cox. What are you? That's Sharon's brother, dude. Are you talking about? <laughs> all right, I want to know. I want to know, dude. Who's this guy? It ain't a, it ain't a race anywhere in this country without some old school dudes with some blue jeans and a pair of fucking new balance and a dope ass flannel. Who is this guy right here, dude? That's, that's the boss. That's is that the boss? Tim Engler. Is that T E right yeah, there? Yeah, that is. I remember, I remember when old Tim used to race at Hopstad, non-wing dude, he'd roll out there and the old had the, had the, his own, you know, Engler machine, whatever it is on the side of the car. I, I remember dude. Is he a cowboy oh, yeah. guy originally? Oh no, he's he's from Evansville, or they they're out of Vincennes. <clears throat> I'm I'm imagining he's from Indiana. Uh, you know, Tim's uh, claim to fame was a seven engine tractor pulling tractor. You know, and so they still to this day build awesome tractor pulling tractors. Um, they had one down there, uh, full custom tubular frame, carbon fiber body. Like it was awesome. Get your tractor pull on. All right, this shot right here, dude. Is this what happened? Now, is this before the races when you walk into the building the first day? Is this what happens right here? <laughs> or is that, what oh, I wish. Is, that, is that what you're thinking mentally? When you're, I mean, hey. you did become the all time Mr. DeCoin, dude. Here it is. Get your memes out, kids. It's Mr. DeCoin Timez. Hey, we'll do one more. We'll do one more for the memes out there so they can screen, we can record, screen record this. Ready? 
Race fans, here he is from San Jose, California, IA, the all-time indoor midget at winner at Dugoin, Team as. <clears throat> there we go. Anyways. So, anyways, this Trying place on Friday out. night, straight juicy, dude. Was it not? It always is so gripped up. And it's just such a small track. You know, gravity helps with the front ends coming up. You know, it's small track. We got a ton of gear in the back of the car. So the thing is just, it's like we're driving around in first gear. So when you have 400 horse midgets that, you know, weigh 900 pounds, I think our weight rule is actually like 1050. Um, you know, with in first gear, they're just ready to pull wheelies. This guy right here, Nick Hoffman, he was a surprise entry. <clears throat> I don't know him, never met him. I don't know anything about him other than he's run modifieds and he's friends with a lot of people I'm friends with. Sounds like a pretty decent dude and he's actually a pretty decent racer. What do you think? Oh, he's a gasser. I've been going to the races and watching him in the modified just murder, just murder people for the last like five years. He just stepped up uh, into late models and he's, and he's doing his thing, you know, so pretty cool to see him down here running a midget you know um, that just goes to show it even the late model guys super talented multitaskers you know you can run a midget late model whatever you know so um yeah it was cool to see him down here i got some pretty good footage of him on the cannon uh, i put it on there for my members i got a little <laughs> membership thing going to you know where i run all the early day footage um <clears throat> it's tough with youtube you know the algorithm rhythms they want it to be just high impact, you know? And when I get to the track, I have the best opportunity to get good footage early on, you know? But it just makes the videos drag out because it's five minutes of, of footage in the beginning and then you go into the night, you know? So I try to make them exciting and, and fast pace, uh, you know, for this generation now that just is into 30 second, one minute videos, you know, you know what you need, dude, you need an OMF account is what it is. That'd be everybody's every girl now has got an OF account. Only fans. You need an OMF account. You need only fans.com So people can log on to your OMF. <laughs> you know what I mean? They could go on there and see all kinds of shit. So anyways, all right. So we, we got, we got hot laps firing off here. Look at this thing on the rear wheels already. How's this thing feeling, dude? Oh, it was right. I mean, look at that. First lap, it just wheelies off the corner all the way down the straightaway, already up again. I mean, that's that angler, that angler power. You know, Tim's been working on this motor. It's been in the books or in the works for like five years, you know, and then last year we, we finally got it to the track and, uh, you know, we got it a national win at, at uh, the BC 39 and, and then at the end of the year at, the, at this indoor race as well. And so, all the hard work from last year is really starting to show off. Yeah, it is. So let's talk about the inside of the car here real quick. A couple things we need to point out. First of all, the steering wheel, four spokes. Let's get down with it, dude. Why, why the four spoker? Well, so I got one right here because I'm OG like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the three spoke here, I hold my wheel right here. And then if you get the wheel on the wrong click because... If you look here, it's got like a little met, you know, the, the teeth. And so then you can be one click off one way or the other. And so the X wheel is the racer X designed by yours truly. Oh shit. Um, just to give you some more hand room. Um, so you, it doesn't matter where you put the wheel on. It's always, if you got room to move around. Um, and that's honestly, just if you run your hands there, not everybody races, the way I do, you know, a lot of guys grip kind of up high or down low, and then those three spoke wheels are fine, you know? So, um, yeah, yeah, uh, hit me up. I, I actually haven't even put them on my store. We went to New Zealand. I turned the store down so we wouldn't get behind. I didn't have a bunch of emails while I was gone. And uh, it's been nice just kind of living comfortably without the pressure of having to ship. Yeah, those international forms are a good time. But dude, this steering wheel and what you said about what you said about gripping the steering wheel. So when I was working with Cruzman at his school all those years ago, he had a theory for everything, dude. And when he talked sprint car midget racing, I listened. When when it came terms of holding the steering wheel, well, some guys you're right. Some guys hold it up here, right? And they're like like this. Well, the problem is when you hold it up high, every hole you hit, what happens? It moves the steering wheel. Yeah. 
So the lower you hold it, so now you're getting in the holes, what happens? Well, your hands are lower, your arms are lower on the steering wheel. Steering wheel don't move as much. So if you're on a cushion, big cushion, big holes, big this, big that, if you're an up high Mark Martin guy, that's how Mark Martin wrote. I'm like, dude, how can you, I mean, so every hole you hit, do you're like, kink, kink, kink. That, I mean, as you get it lower, you're like, kink, kink, kink. you're bouncing through the holes. You know how it is. It's like motorcycle. Stay loose, homie. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Hey, Jason, hey, Jason Leffler, I'm running, I'm running third to Ryan Newman and Jason Leffler at Pikes Peak in like 2001, the first breakthrough moment in, in my career on, on national ESPN. television. On ESPN, <laughs> dude. Dude, and we're running down the back stretch, and Jason is holding the wheels at like one and seven. And or maybe it was the opposite. I don't even remember. I just remember running down the front chute, looking over. We're blowing past the front stretch flag stand, and I'm you looking at his car. He had white gloves. Yeah. He had white gloves, and I'm like, How's he holding his wheel like that? You know, like, like, like this? Ah. Like, yeah. You know who else did like that on the pavement? It was Stuart. Dude. Tony, at IRP, same thing. He'd have those gloves with the hand, the right hand way up high and the left hand way down low on the left. So when he's in the corner, like it was, I don't know, man, but I know and I know what you're totally talking about. Yeah. I right. think on pavement, you know, like you get to where you can only turn the wheel so far without having to let go of the wheel again, you know, and grab mm -hmm. more. Well, you don't want to do that. So if you're up high and down low like this and you can roll it in and, and get your full steering, you know? And and so I actually run an IRP a couple of years ago. I had to move my hand, I had to cock the wheel in there sideways so that I had enough pull in because if the thing ever got tight, I'd get it into my seat. I, I had a butler built and those cars are just kind of like confined in there, you know? And Brody you don't have a whole lot of room. You gotta put the Brody dub on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> then you can put a picture, your special little picture on the Brody dub and stare at it. Hey, by the way, real quick, the steering wheel, the color of it, it's super trippy and reminds me of every like blanket, trippy hippie blanket hanging from a girl's bedroom. Like I knew in Ventura growing up around here, like routine. <laughs> that color. Hey, hey, so it. my buddies over at Superior Steering Wheels build these for me. They do custom wraps and custom colors. So, you know, it's it's like a bright blue with neon pink splashes on the on it. You know, it's got a little bit of sand for grip. Um those guys are awesome. They're out of Texas. Hit them up. Really? But yeah. Texas? Dude, that thing looks like it's straight out of Venice Beach, dude. The colors. I love it. Plus, <laughs> it's Timez's. You, yeah, you, got, you got guys straight hand dipping Timez steering wheels at Venice Beach Boardwalk. <laughs> All right, let's move on here. You got a fresh lid. Uh, oh, yeah. I love the colors. Of the oh, by the way, real quick. I need. To, I don't know if I can go back a little bit. Anyways. So I, I, my cameras didn't work for the first two times I went out. Practice oh. and uh, qualifying. So luckily I had uh, dirt vision footage, use that. You guys too can go check it out. It's always good. Got Rob Klepper on the mic and I love hearing Rob. Dude, you're hitting all the marks right now, dude. You're trying to get that big sponsor right now. You're, we're trying to get that $150,000 check. Hey, the two and three thousands are great. The little ones are nice. We, 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 it's like it's like the movie coming to America, dude. When they're in the church and the the, the, the the plates going around, and like ah, I thought that wasn't trash throwing those chicken bowls in, but the girls like listen for donations. We like the kind that jingles, but we prefer the money that folds. You know what I mean? So keep those cards and letters coming in. Speaking of which, crowd a little light at the do coins. We need, that's why we do shows that's like Friday. this. Yeah, we that's why we keep doing shows like this. You know, midweek shows, they kind of get to the heartland of America, try to reach those people working those uh, 50, 40, 50 hour a week jobs, get you guys excited, pull the curtain back ever so slightly to the real life of Team Ez, and uh, get you people to come and meet them at the racetrack. So, anyways, dude, this place was straight juicy, dude. Look at this place. Take a bite out of it. So juicy. Look at you. Oh, a little tight. I was, li I was way tight. I was way tight. I hear you're like this is what this is when you got to tell your uh, your Hispanic family out there or your Hispanic uh, familia, your friends out there, and even new fan, fans, fans and friends. This is when you go tengo miedo, tengo miedo, tengo miedo. It means I'm scared. You're so tight to say. <laughs> that you might give me your new T-shirt, dude. Tengo miedo, tengo miedo. Anyways, so right here you got your parachute on. You're ready to go. What are you off a? Of, oh, you're off a of turn two right here. Tough to turn two, yeah. Dude, who's that? Is that Ross Weiss right there? Is that Ross Weiss? It is. Guy? It looks like old Ross. It is. is. Matter of fact, 
He's punching That's in that. That's the good footage. Yeah, dog, dude. He's, you know what he's doing? He's punching in that door dash. He goes, you know what? I wonder if that fucking pizza joint around the corner, fucking mozzarella stick. I'll get in a fucking <laughs> deliver here tonight, dude. He's punching it in. He's putting that order in, dude. He's a Southern Illinois boy, dude. He knows where all the spots are. Oh, Tyler Burnett, your boy Tyler Burnett. He's trying to come in late, dude, with the with the food he reviews. He does know. But yeah, Tyler R- knows. RW, well, like we all know, dog. We don't get this belly. We're fucking <laughs> eating Von Keto all the time. Goddamn. Hey, I got to fit in my C, and I, I can't afford to buy new suits. And so, like, for real, I sometimes I have to starve myself and just drink Pedialyte so that I can fit in my suit and my seat. <sighs> Uh, cause you know, like I, as long as it's in date, I got to run it. <laughs> wow. All right. So here we are. All right here. Okay. Real quick. Oh, yeah. though, dude, you guys built this awesome midget and I love these. You see all these midgets now with all the, it looks like a space machine, like a spaceship on the inside with all the glow in the dark gauges, but I, it, it's warmed the heart, dude. When I saw these old school gauges, it just kind of warmed the heart. I don't know. Hey, probably, Tim, probably Tim's sorry like, about that. <laughs> Tim's like, hey, uh, has the temperature on it? It's like, I, I don't know. I mean, it's literally a range this big. You know, when it's the big circle, you know, I always put like 250 straight up and down and like 20 pounds of oil pressure straight up and down. That way, I just got to glance up. If I ever seem the needle straight up and down, then I have to pay attention. I, yeah. Well, I love these. Uh, I love these gauges, though. It just reminds me. It's like, God damn it! We, oh, they're OG. We built these. Fuck. We built this goddamn sweet ass car, carbon fibered out. We got Ty here, Ty there. Even got a little something special <laughs> over here. But anyways, the fucking gauges. I pulled them out of the '65 Chevelle. Hey, little, it's the vintage touch. edition. Right. All right. Here we are. This is what heat race action. What do we got going on here, dude? Yeah. They, got Tyler Robinson. Wheels up right away. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, and it's yeah. happening so fast. Look, dude, you got a big break right there. Wheels up for team as in a turn three. And yeah. there you go. Yeah. Merry Tyler Christmas, got bro. tight. <laughs> yes. And that's all you need in that room, that building. You're like, I just need a gift. Let me handle the rest. And right now, you're <laughs> what are you focusing on right now? Just singing that bitch. Trying in to there? keep the f- trying to keep the front tires on the ground. You I'm not even barely touching the the throttle because the whole thing is keeping the front tires on the ground so that you can continue to turn. Wheel yeah. spin. Like, you don't want to go down in there and dump the throttle. That's when bad shit happens, right? Wheel spin. Yeah. Okay. Wheel spin. Look how bright it is in that room, dude. That's like, man, you can't do shit in that room without somebody seeing it. It's like a it's like a damn mm. uh, detective, but they shake you down. Oh, man. Look dude, at and it's it's so loud in there. It's oh. so loud. Like, the, I, 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 it took me a day and a half to get rid of my headache, whether it was from fumes or, or from uh, just being loud, you know? The micros, dude. The micros. Imagine if micros, those little micros sounded like sprint cars. That'd be pretty sick. All right, here you are. You're doing They're the They're even louder. Yes. Yes. I doing the walk through the pits, showing people what it's like. I was actually walking over to my buddy, uh, Bob. Bob, uh, Bob's Bob got cancer, and, and so I wanted to go over there and say hi and see how he was doing. Dave Step was over there, and, and, you know, we're trying to – become good friends again you know it's just it takes time you know so i went out of my way to go down there waved at dave go go hang out with bob a bit and uh bob was my crew guy for i don't know two and a half years and probably the hardest working crew guy i've ever had okay and and this dude i would scream at him because i'm an idiot when i get out of the car okay um here's bob right here Oh, Bob up here. Nice, dude. And uh, so I would scream at Bob, and Bob would just suck it up and just do work and just never, like, you know, I've had guys I screamed at, and they just turned around and walked away and left. And and I did it to Bob a lot, you know, and Bob never backed down. Bob was, he's he's the best crew guy as far as, you know, just getting work done, you know. Uh, nobody ever wants to put body panels on the car. Bob's got all the body off both cars off, and he's washing them all, and they bodies them afterwards. And I'm telling you, we hate the body. <laughs> we hate the body. You always hear that about midgets. It's like they're so fun, but they're so just so hard to work on. There he is, dude. Now, when yeah, now, when did, there's now, what, Bob. What cars did Bob help you on? On the RMS stuff. Oh, really? Okay, wow. Yeah. 
for a couple of years and and it was tough with the rms stuff because there was a procedure you know with everything and so whenever we needed help um in the past year we just give bob a ring and he'd show up and jump right back in you know well bob here's to you brother this one's for you dude this that's one, right this one warms the heart dude look at this thing look at this this warms my heart right here i mean what do you think at this point you're like damn with the race <laughs> yeah i'm tell i'm telling everybody how we don't need to change the setup anymore because you know she's gonna be wheels up i actually didn't even want to see that you know um but because i i want it to go slick to the fence okay i do because then it puts on a good race for the fans you know you got kyle uh, you got um, Cottle on the bottom and Zach Dom just rolling the bottom with the tire up on the berm. And you got T-Mez bashing the fence down. And that's what we love about midget racing. Cottle on the bottom. I like that. Yeah. How about this dude right here? Yeah, dude, big, big fan right here. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. We're going to make him a superstar. Do you know who this is right here? Who is this guy? Of, yeah, that I who do. That? That's uh, the owner of, of the Mound Stout Cars. Oh, what up? Dude, look at this guy. He's just loving yep. it. He's like, man, yeah. how come my drivers can't do this shit? Nah, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> how come my drivers can't no, have their own YouTube show? Uh, that's Jay. He's uh, he's good dude. He's that that dude right there. He he puts a lot of hard work to probably have race cars at the track. You know, not all of us have really good funding in this sport. You know, and mm -hmm. and he's one of those guys I feel like doesn't have amazing funding, and he puts in a lot of work to make this happen. For sure, dude. Now that's uh, Dom and Zach Dom's car owner. Is that who that is? Uh, uh, he. I know, no, no. He, who was driving for him? Um, Did you say Mount Motorsports? Mount Stout. Oh, it's, yeah, uh, Mount Stout the Motorsports. The forty or no? Am Mc, I yeah, McDermott was in it last year, yeah, and yeah, uh, this year they got they got some different guys. Yeah, yeah, a couple guys you passed. You don't remember? I mean, they're just they're just blank cars to you at this point, right? So. <laughs> It's the beginning of the year, and and midget racing changes all the time, especially with those guys. They actually got TJ Smith in one of them, and Tyler Edwards. Okay, I think yeah. Tyler Edwards is the the top sides up here, bud. Dude, he that poor guy. He was a fucking human pinball machine, and he was getting scrappy. <laughs> I mean, he's a big tall. Hey, we're guy. about to see it. Yeah, yeah, dude. You, yeah. Dude, he. I felt so bad for him. I was like. I was like, I felt like I was at a hockey game. I was ready to fucking tear off my hat and glasses. I'm like, all right, let's fuck. Let's fucking fight, dude. Like, I was so upset for him, man. Anyways, let's get into it. So right here, you're just yeah. hyping, dude. This, this, this doing little he actually messing. starts on the front row with me. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, dude. This is wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you got to, you know. Did they have music Do my playing? little in-between stuff. Did they have yeah, music Yeah, they usually do. To? Nice. I, I always like that. Yeah. Dude, remember that guy? Who was that guy that owned the white 10 cars from Illinois or Wisconsin? I, did you ever run that white 10 car that everybody raced for years? Guy was a little different, had a small little trailer, real low butt guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about. He owned uh, cars for years. Tracy ran for him. So many guys. Don. Don Moore. Moore. Don Moore. Don Moore. We walk into the Yep, Southern. he still has a car. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. He's uh, the Christian music guy. Yeah. One day, dude, we walk in. He made in. Christian music. Yes. We walk into the Southern Illinois Center. It's 11 a.m. It's noon. Everybody's loading in. And we hear, we hear an organ playing. A little keyboard. And it's not like the Phantom of the Opera. It's like, and it's not quite Elton John. It's just different. And we look up. And on the corner of the of the buildings, you have the concrete. It's like the bathrooms. He's yeah. up there doing the whole thing, dude. I'm like, I mean, it was it was crazy. It was like sitting in the Ramada, dude. Like, you get, I don't know, you're walking into a hotel and someone's just da -da 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 doing this whole thing. It was that's crazy. awesome. That's awesome. Nothing. Hey, it's not a oh, podcast yeah. without a few awkward moments. You know what I mean? There was one. Put it on the put it on the board. All right. So here we go. We're halfway through this thing. You're you're trying to get yourself <clears> pumped up. It's Friday night. It's Dew Coin. Forty six midgets. You're you're coming in. You're tied for all time I'm, wins. 
I'm trying to keep my anxiety down because I've just found out that I'm starting on the front row and ultimately you're going to get into lap traffic right away. And, uh, I've had that happen a couple times and kind of take me out, you know? So, yeah, you've had, your, um, uh, yeah, you've, you've taken your hits at the old Duke point. I mean, you're the all time winner, bro. But, uh, look at that shot, dude. That's what I'm talking about. Shane Cottle, Shane Cottle right here, right here. Oh, grandpa throttle, dude. He got a new helmet painted with it says Coddle on the front. I'm like, I was trying to look on the interview. I'm thinking, did he put Grandpa Throttle on it with like a walker? Because that's what hey, I would do. I wouldn't say that. You wouldn't say that? I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I've had him punch me twice. Yeah, but you're still here. You're still here. I, yeah. You done hit that <laughs> yes, hard, apparently. I just, you know, like. You know? <laughs> <laughs> done hit that hard. I think I remember that. Was that a sprint car situation? Because I mean, this was this, we got to go back ten some years for that, right? Probably. I was in Paul Hazen's car. We were at Hobstot. Oh, yeah. oh at Hobstot for Hazy? Yeah. Damn, long tow award. Yeah, really, you must have been like Paul. We got to go to Hobstot. Hey, I had Paul on my good side. You know, he uh, had he believed in old Timez. Well, you went, you uh, won from last with the black tail take on the fifty-seven. The one time Paul showed up with that car looking like an old jalopy, and you guys won from last at Kokomo. We got the video, dude. That was pretty wicked. It, but it came under That's weird awesome. circumstances, right? Didn't wasn't there some weird scoring no. snap? No. Yes, there was. Okay. Yes, there was. Okay. I think. Okay. I think. I, I think Schumann and Billy Peterball had got together on a start that they they called back. Because it was a bad start, but when Billy hit Schumann, it debeated Schumann's left rear and debeated the right front or something, and so they send him off the track, and I'm rolling around in third place from the back, and and I was going to drive by him anyways, you know, but they come back on the track and put them in front of me, and at that point, they I would have crashed the, the brand they, new car. They came back onto the track to, to beat them. <laughs> Yeah, and they put them in front of me because they called it just like a bad, a bad start, and they took the hit. Oh, They're yeah, like, Listen, was... it was our fault. We said green, no wait, red, yellow, and then everybody stacks up. One of those deals, it's, dude. This is like fifteen years ago. We were, I mean, we were in our hey, maybe twenties at this time. I was so not happy about it, and mm -hmm. I think I passed them in like a half lap on the restart. You know, like we'll have to go check that back out because I, I just remember just put it to the fence. You know, it was like it was like days of thunder. Like I'm just I'm going in turn three when I shouldn't be, and this is I'm gonna win this thing regardless. We're gonna have to dig it out, dig it out, and then we're gonna have to have Schumann and Peterbaugh on with their own separate <laughs> their own separate uh, way the interpretations of that all went. This is gonna be great. This is 2024 is gonna be amazing, folks. All right, let's get into it. It's Friday night feature. We're four wide, dude. You see, the thing is, these shots like this, these four wide, you can clip these out, sell them for fifty nine ninety five on the internet. Look at that, four wide here at DuCoin. And look at that, dude. I can't believe you guys four wide. fit. Oh, now we're going I know. double here. Okay, here we go. We're green. Oh, outside yeah. Outside the front row, down into one. Take it from here. Oh. Tyler Edwards gives me a slider. I turn back underneath him, and I'm going right back. Good stuff. Oklahoma versus California. Can you dig it? Yeah, yes. dude, look at him out yes. there. I know. Old Ted. Old Ted I know. Dude. Track was so nice yeah. on Friday. You want to run the top? It was, it was it so nice. It. it could handle you, right? So I um, I basically go here and I'm like, okay, just run the bottom. J just run the bottom. He's, he's you know, this. I, I'm really good. You know, like I, I feel like I have the best car in the building. I just need to sneak by this guy and and uh yeah i'm watching this i'm watching the steering wheel placement right now dude i'm watching that left hand see if you get that baby over at three o'clock but you you're getting over there at one o'clock every now and then do coin it's it, was it pretty demanding on you being one of the early races of the year you you did come off of new zealand so you're not totally like out of shape fresh for season it's it's you know? <clears throat> It's hands down one of the toughest races to, to run, you know, because Physically? you want to step on. No, no, just mentally. And you want to step on the gas, but you can't because it's it's and and so then it's like this this race to not race fast to in, in me to, for me, you know, hmm. um, 
it is it is interesting you know like uh, i've watched other people's in-car stuff and they don't race it the way i do hmm. <clears throat> oh dude they're getting into it back there you could see them but look at this oh pace, dude. dude they're they are bashing each other. I think that was when Tim's got into Tyler, and Tyler just fed it right back to him. It was great. Yeah, they were they were boogieing, dude. Who's this behind you here? Who's this lean, running running you down? Orange. On the bottom it? is uh, that's <clears throat> Bundy, and then you got Edwards, and I think Gavin Miller. Oh, so that's and Mitchell. Tim's. So look at Edwards, dude. He's yeah, Mitchell. Some... Now, are you backing it down? Are you going full noise here? Or are you not full rocket switch? But are you? No, honestly, right like now? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to make good laps with my race car. Like I said, it's it's tough, you know. Like the car coming off the corner is trying to like turn left. You can see I don't turn the wheel left much, you know, like because, and and so then, the, it's building a curb and it's getting slick. So I'm having to pedal it, you know. I get to lap traffic here and and you know trying to not get crashed you know i'm leading this so i don't want to give it away right by crashing you know and and that's i've done that you know 20 times in my career so i'm telling myself this you know like chill out dude chill out you know until you got you know somebody bombing sliders there's really no pressure on me i just need to pick the right lane here to get by this you know it's a roadblock yeah. right there i thought i was done that guy come off tight. I thought I was done. We were going to stick it in the fence. But, uh, you know, we, we had some luck on our side. And, and I kept saying all night long, I'd rather be lucky than good any day. Um, and caught a break there, you know. And Jade pulled out of yellow. And, and so, out of lap traffic, you know. At this point, I mean, how much are you feeling that grip, that that texture up there on that cushion? Which end was gnarlier? Was turn one more gnarly than three on entry? No, yeah, it's probably it pretty good in turn one. Um, <clears throat> at the end there, you know, and and I actually cut that out of it because, like I said, I, you got to make kind of a fast video, and the in car footage will be you know ten minutes long, so kind of cut the back half of it out of it, but. Um, yeah just it's a pedal fest on those uh you know slick to a curb tracks you know the the track is slick and so the things to spin out and then you hit this moisture that is sure you you've had all day and to drive and the car is trying to drive you you know so in the beginning of the race i'm really just trying to figure out what the car wants you know throttle input wise and how hard I can yacht into the corner and um, really infield berm was so you I I tried not to run it, but if you climbed up on it just a little bit in the center, it, it really was nice. I, I had a lot more practice on Saturday night because we were running around the bottom, so I pretty much spent most of the race, you know, like just just bashing the curb. Yeah, well, I was curious about that because, I mean, hey, it's dirt track racing, right? Everything's going to happen, you know, but I know this. Water and dirt make mud, so we don't want mud, so we have to come in somewhere in the in the middle, right? We don't want dust, we don't want rubber, and we don't want mud, so we have to come somewhere come in the middle of that. Now, how do we do that? Friday night, dude, they had it down. They had it down, and then Saturday, I'm thinking, all right, it's more laps, more money, more on the line. It's feature day, big events, and then the track was completely different, and then the other way. And so it's, I'm thinking, well, a, a lot of these dr young drivers and young parents, drivers' parents, and whoever getting in the ear of knee-jerking these tracks and going, we need to slow it down. It's, there's no, we, we can't use a hooky curb. You're going to get somebody injured. My kid's out there bicycling all by themselves out there on a dangerous track. Well, folks, this is the difference between the skilled and the not skilled. You're supposed to take a 900 pound midget with 400 horsepower and figure out how to drive it. And back in the day, you had to figure out how to drive it on a track with a big cushion. And that separated the heroes. Those days, they came looking for you to buy your t-shirt. You didn't have to fucking, 
get into the battle of the, of the merch monsters. They came looking for you because you did it better than everybody else. So when there's a big cushion out there, guess what? It's Dave Darlin time. It's yeah. Timez time. So yeah. watch him work. So if you make it yeah. slick and slow and nerfed up, that means any kid from any outlaw cart, any micro sprint can get in there and bang wheels with Timez and look like a fucking up and coming NASCAR star. Why? Because yeah. the track is it's on novice level on the video game. It's not on hero level. I agree. I agree. I I, I wish it would have got a little bit wider, like I said, but uh, you know, it was interesting. The all I can say on the second night track was the water must have just stuck on the bottom because there was just a six foot wide pad of the best dirt you've ever seen a race on. Shove a screwdriver and inches into it. All right, race fans, there you go. Team Ez, he did it. Congratulations, man. You're all thank time you. Ducoin indoor midget winner of all time it's team as from san jose california next time we'll talk about some old school motorcycle stories of you getting popped on a i don't know 580 or 380 wherever the hell it is up there in the bay area dude for next time yeah we can do that it's yeah dude, we need to unearth the original team extreme dvd we need to unearth yeah that would be a I don't know where it's at. I don't have that anymore. I had the DVD. I got my hands on it, but this is back when you first moved to Indy. But we need to find it digitally. We need to reach out to somebody connected and get it on YouTube or something. But the fans need to see that. That would be rad. The Team Extreme Motorcycles San Jose Stunt Riders, dude. Before all the drifting stuff. Anyways. All right, bro. Well, thanks again. And uh, what do we got to tell the fans out there? what's, What's next? What is next? Uh, that's a good question. I was looking at the schedule and I forgot already. But, you know, when you bang your head a lot racing cars and uh, crashing big, that'll happen. You know what we need to do for next year? I just thought of this. We're going to we're gonna solve a lot of problems, okay? Because right now, dude, the USAC CRA series out here, it's hotter than a pistol. Dude, there's 24 to 30 cars, good equipment, and everybody's kind of on the same that's level awesome. right now. On the same level, but this is where this is where we start to really figure it out and add more colors to a painting. In 2025, if you don't do New Zealand, maybe even if you do, but you do a Chili Bowl, New Zealand, and you come out here and do the three or four races after Ocala in Florida, you do the CRA stuff. Imagine the potential. Somebody puts you in a car out That'd here. That'd be fun. At the two or three Paris shows where you run so well. Bring you out here, run here, bring the team TV. We can do live shows out here and do the content creation out here in Hollyweird. Then the yeah. fans go, wow, dude, Flo ain't covering CRA? Well, guess what? Who cares? We got Team TV and Buckley coming out of the woodwork, blowing the dust off of it. We got them. So next year, I like car, it. car owners, open up your hearts, your homes. And uh, your wallets, because this guy's going to go fucking fast. And we're not here to run second. We're going to fucking saw the motherfucker from the radiator <laughs> forward. Or we're going to park that bitch and do cage stands with the confetti like a dew coin, dude. Fucking raining fucking $100. Yeah. Bills. Were those $100 bills? I wish. <laughs> so are you on 50? Are you, get, are you lucky enough to get 50? Or, I mean, on the win? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I hope so. Yeah. Because two grand sounds, so. like, sounds pretty nice when that WRG check shows up in the whole mailbox. Okay. Yeah, that'll that'll help uh, help pay my rent or my mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, you got to pay for that spot you got. I mean, it's too cold right now because you're wearing a jacket indoors. But hey, when that sun starts <laughs> peaking in Indy, you got to start burning laps in the in the in the old Timez acreage out there, Timez Speedway. Hey, it said it was 31 degrees outside, and I I just, if it's not 60, I'm still in a hoodie, you know, so. Dude, I'm telling you. I mean, how many race car drivers out there right now, right now, have their own pad in Indiana, Indiana getting a race full time? You ain't got, dude, you ain't got to be doing carpet and all this carpentry and swinging a hammer and all this shit right now. You're, you're, you're still on the wheel knowing the deal, dude. But how many of these guys, see, how many of these guys out there right now? can honestly say it's Tuesday. It's 3.35. My kids aren't home yet. I'm just going to wrap up this little show with Buckley, and I'm going to go outside in the fucking 
convertible and burn some laps in the grass, dude. Got to burn a new. Got to burn in a new uh, new lane out there. Well, I am pretty fortunate. I am pretty fortunate. I've worked pretty hard to give myself a uh, low income or a low uh, overhead so that I didn't have to, uh, you know, have a big income. Yeah, dude, you're not uh, you're not house poor like some of these fools, especially out here in California. I mean, I got a buddy that's mortgage payments forty five hundred bucks a month, a month, and that's oh not my even God. Eh, whatever. It's like that's two bedroom, two bath in the normal normal community here. Anyways, so you're doing it right. You got things, you got things, got things clicking. I mean, it's got to feel good. It's got to feel good. Yeah, it's nice when you can pay your bills. That is, that's a, that's a great feeling to, to put all your bills on auto deposit and not have to look at the bank. That's pretty nice. It is, and especially in your line of work. I mean, you just want to worry about, you know, getting to the next track and winning races. It's going fast. Going fast, man. So, anyways. All right, so Timez is on. He's on everywhere. You're on the YouTube's, Instagram. What's your favorite platform besides YouTube? Like, what's your favorite like social media platform? I use Instagram more because I like pictures, and I'm not very good at writing. So um, I put all my attention to the YouTube thing, but I do post a lot on the on the Instagram. Did they give you that hat for the for the win? They did. So they could it. even says. Uh, 2024 on there and some winter stuff i don't know yeah what did you think of the whole rollout they did you did an intro we did we i mean maybe that's going to come on the second youtube channel the new two page drop here this week youtube uh video but i actually did didn't do that i i i uh, you can't use the good footage that they're going to use on youtube so i can use like some intro stuff and steal some stuff here and there but it's interesting how stuff gets monetized or demonetized so any music like i've been uh with the wits rc racing products for a while and their commercial just recently now wants to share monetization so then basically whoever's getting that off the song is taking a piece of my videos now wow well stupid youtube and jamie o'brien explained this we brought up jamie o'brien surfer in hawaii his youtube channel he just hit a million subs and his whole thing was as much as i want to monetize my channel as much as i want to rely on the channel it's a dicey situation so i've had to rely on my channel to move merch i've had to rely yes. on my channel to move merch whatever money trickles in great great but we have to keep elevating keep making the, the content to keep the whole you know the whole machine rolling you know and i understand that now but we have other options yeah. as, the, as we move into the future. But anyways, yeah, dude, good times. What's the, what's, do we do you too, bud. Do we know what the next race is? Do we know what the next, uh, when are you going to entertain us? Again? I have, what's on the, what's I on, think, the, uh, it's start, it's April 4th or something. Maybe you sack at Terre Haute or I'm in a, actually, no, that might be, uh, I don't know. I got a couple weeks off. I'm still in chill mode. Is, is the outlaw thing a go, a no or a go? Yeah, I actually get to run my first outlaw race. Uh, that's April 15th and 16th or 14th and 15th at uh, Paducah, Kentucky and Hobstadt, I believe. The Stott, too. That's right. That's yeah. right. But that's like a month away. Cool. All right. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well. Yeah. We'll yep. The kids just guy just heard the bus pull up, so I got to roll. Thanks, bro. We'll see you on the next one. Team as race fans. Right on. Tune in. I'm out. Tap in. See you, brother.